what's up guys welcome to the momentum trading lab and in today's video i'm going to show you exactly how you can identify a fair value gap and how you can implement it in your trading all right so first of all you have two types of fair value gaps a bullish fair value gap also known as a busy which stands for buy side imbalance sell side inefficiency and then you also get a bearish fair value gap which is also known as a sibi which is a sell side imbalance buy side inefficiency fair value gap so how do you identify a fair value gap so a fair value gap is a three candle formation and the gap is the area between candle one's high and candle three's low so if there's a gap between the high of this candle and the low of this candle that area is known as your fair value gap so a busy that is a buy side imbalance so it means that it's offering more buy side than sell side so it's sell side inefficient so that's been your busy or bullish fair value gap and then next up you have the bearish or the sibi fair value gap which is also a three candle formation and if there is an opening between candle three's low and candle one's high that is known as a sibi fair value gap so a sibi is a sell side imbalance so it's offering more sell side than buy side and that is why it is known as a sell side imbalance buy side inefficiency okay so now that you know what a fair value gap is let's look at what it is not so right here we have an example of um, what is not a fair value gap so if we look at this three candle formation the high of candle one overlapped with the low of candle three so there's no gap and then if we look um, over here to the bearish formation if we look at the low of candle three and the high of candle one we'll see that they overlap and there is no gap okay so important fair value gap levels that i look at so first off it's the fair value gap high the fair value gap low and then the consequent encroachment which is the midpoint of the fair value gap and i'll show you um my fib settings that i use to easily um, identify the consequent encroachment of a fair value gap so the high is just the low of candle three the low is the high of candle one and then the midpoint of the gap is known as the consequent encroachment and then for the sibi fair value gap that is exactly the same the high is the low of candle three the low of the fair value gap is the high of candle one and then the midpoint of the fair value gap is known as the consequent encroachment okay and then you also get inversion fair value gaps that is when price action returns to the fair value gap but the fair value gap fails and price action moves through the fair value gap so let's have a look at this example so right here we have the three candle formation for a busy or a bullish fair value gap the price came back it could not hold the fair value gap and it broke through and it tested that as resistance and then it continued to the downside so this is an inversion fair value gap and then right here we had a sibi fair value gap price came um, back to the fair value gap broke through and then tested it as support and then price continued to the upside so that is what is known as an inversion fair value gap okay let's have a look at an example of a busy or a bullish fair value gap so here on the one hour we have a three candle formation where the high of this candle does not overlap with the low of this candle so in between we have a busy or a bullish fair value gap so i'm going to mark this off with a box and then we can extend it a little bit and then to mark off the consequent encroachment i use a fibonacci tool for that so i'm gonna snap it onto the high of this candle to the low of that candle and let me open the settings so i use the zero the one and then the 0 0.5 which marks off the consequent encroachment so now we can see the consequent encroachment line right there and i'm just going to get a normal trend line 
mark it off like that. Now we can see the consequent encroachment. So busy consequent encroachment. Okay, so let's have a look at how price action reacted once it came back into the fair value gap. So we can see it came towards the consequent encroachment, but did not close a candle below it. And then price action moved back to the upside. So this is an example of a busy or a bullish fair value gap. Let's have a look at a SIBI fair value gap or a bearish fair value gap. So right here, we have a three candle formation and the low of the candle does not overlap with the high of the candle. So this is a valid SIBI fair value gap. So we can mark that off with our box. We can extend it a little bit. Then using our FIP tool to find the consequent encroachment, just snap it from the low to the high. We can add a line. So that is the SIBI consequent encroachment. So you can see our price action came back. It touched the fair value gap once, then got rejected and moved to the downside. And then right here, it retraced all the way back exactly to the consequent encroachment before moving back to the downside. Okay, let's have a look at an example of an inversion fair value gap. So right here we can extend this fair value gap. And let's extend the consequent encroachment as well. Then we can see right here our price action broke through this fair value gap. And then tested it as support. And you can see how it bounced um, away to the upside every time it came back and touched this box. So this is an example of an inversion fair value gap. Okay, so what would you actually use a fair value gap for? So I use it to frame entry ideas and I'll show you a quick example. So my main entry model consists of a liquidity rate, a market structure shift with displacement and the displacement is indicative of a fair value gap. So for this example, we add a high. And above high, we have buy side liquidity. So we came up, we raided the buy side liquidity, started to displace to the downside, which also gave us the bearish market structure shift. This is the displacement leg down, which created a fair value gap. And whenever you want to go short, you, we are looking for a PD array inside of a premium so we can pull our FIP from this high to the low and then you can frame your entry idea inside of this fair value gap because it is um, touching the premium side of the impulse to the downside all right so that has been my explanation of a fair value gap if you add any value out of this video please um, consider pressing that like and subscribe and then i will see you guys in the next one thank you for watching